Okay, welcome to what is going to be a bunch of videos. What I'm trying to accomplish is this. I, uh, when I was younger, my first ever video game system was an original Game Boy and had a million games for it. And then obviously being, a, being not able to afford as a young kid games, I worked at Funko Land back when Funko Land was an actual store now it's GameStop as you all know but Funko Land and I would I traded all my Game Boy games in and traded all my uh, other video games in and then I originally and then I got a PlayStation 4 when PlayStation 4 came out uh, for my 12th birthday I think my dad got me a Genesis when Nintendo 64 had finally originally come out so I was you know always behind video game systems and, and when they and the release dates um, but working at Funko Land, not that I got any extra deals or anything, but I was able to trade in all my games and got an N64. And then when and I saw the writing on the wall with the N64, not only were the games extremely pricey, but there weren't a lot of games, uh, diverse games, as the PlayStation 1 just kept demolishing everybody in sight. So I traded in my Genesis, I traded in my Game Boy stuff, for N64, then I traded in my N64, got a PS1. Uh, around the same time, I had a Saturn uh, with a bunch of games. I traded all that stuff in, and then over and over and over, you know, eventually I got a PlayStation 2. Then I'm obviously I'm in college now, or at that point, and uh, started buying my own stuff. But when I was a kid, Ult there was a game for the Game Boy called Ultima Ruins of Virtue, and I don't know if any of you guys have ever played it, but Ultima Ruins of Virtue, you had to find it was either six or seven runes in the game, and then you beat the game. I found six, and the seventh, apparently, when I called Nintendo Power as a kid, I had to go into this cavern, get this underwater magical flute, go to the edge of the, the world, play the flute, and then that cavern would appear. The problem was, I had no health left, I had no money left, and so every time I went back into this cavern where the supposed flute was, I died. And I said to myself, you know what, I'm done with RPGs for the rest of my life. And I must have been 12 years old. And I had never played, never will play an RPG, I said to myself, ever again. Then my freshman year of college, around 2002, Kingdom Hearts came out. And I said, oh, Christ, i got to play this. And so that's really the exception. But a few years ago, I said to myself, I really want to play Ultima Ruins of Virtue again. And obviously, I don't have a Game Boy. I don't have any of this stuff. But I could buy the game. I could buy the system. But I want all my original boxes. And thus began a quest over the last three weeks or so to not only find all these games, but now I'm in a position where, you know what, I want all my Genesis games back, I want all my Saturn games back, I want all my PS1 games back, I want all my N64 games, my Dreamcast, all that stuff. And so these videos will show you the places I've gone to uh, to be able to find all the stuff. Now, a lot of my Game Boy original box stuff will be in a separate video, and that's going to be, that's from uh, eBay and Amazon. Um, but a lot of the stuff came from different, you know, different retro video game stores. Some of them I'll be naming. Uh, but I want to start off first, and it's going to be a mix and match video of all the places I went to. Uh, there's a place in the western part of Massachusetts and in New York area called J Street Games. I got a bunch of my stuff from there. And I want to see if this one is from J Street or not. I might be from, I think it is from J Street. Yeah, it's J Street. So I'm going to start off, uh, I'm going to show you Eternal Champions. Eternal Champions is for the Genesis. Now before I get into this stuff, all my games are boxed and with instructions. They're CIB, complete inbox, construction booklets, inserts, everything. Uh, but instructions, as you can see, Eternal Champions, okay? And real quick, prepare for the ultimate game. Nine huge warriors battle for the right to face the eternal champion and win the supreme prize. The life that fate stole. Kick, punch, and smash through friends and foes alike in the, in the punishing 32-player tournament. Uh, you can build your own battle room, fight its deadly obstacles, plus another warrior. Each fighter has their own unique martial arts fighting styles. Can you overcome Rax's Muay Thai attack? Probably said that wrong. Counter blades, full force attack with over 35 moves per character. Midnight heats up the street. Can you discover the secret overkills? And play backbone jarring highlights or the entire select fest with instant play. This also recommends that you have the Sega arcade pad with six buttons. So that's Eternal Champions. The next game I was able to get from J Street is Columns. And this is actually the original Columns. Okay. 
Uh, sort of like a Tetris game, sort of like a jewel box game for the original PC, but it says drift back to ancient pho Phoenicia and challenge yourself with columns, a game favored by Middle Eastern merchants. In this mesmerizing pastime, tinker with your riches to align glittering jewels across down or diagonally. As you line up colors, the gems vanish and more sparklers drop from above. The challenge increases as the jewels fall more rapidly. You must quickly align them before the columns reach the top. You don't have to be a joystick whiz to excel, even at the hardest levels. Try flash columns and make a flashing jewel disappear before time runs out. Enjoy solitary games or play with a friend. Imagine yourself on the warm Mediterranean coast or drifting over a languid sea. Forget the passage of time and tickle your mind with columns, a brilliant game of strategy and skill. This obviously came out in 1990. This is columns for the Genesis. This is really easy. This one, you know, started, might be the first or second one of all time, but this is NHLPA Hockey 93, the EA Sports NHL 93. Um, skate with all the greats. Over 500 real players have skated into the hot sequel to NHL Hockey. Now you can skate, stick, and score with all the greats. Robitaille, Chelios, Recchi, and Mullen. Rosters of every professional team, including expansion teams Ottawa and Tampa Bay. It tells you how crazy, if I start making faces, I apologize. My sinuses are killing me, but how crazy is this game? Ottawa and the Tampa Bay Lightning were expansion teams back then. That's how far back this goes. There's over 20 new features in 93. Battery backup, compile pass, player statistics, no passwords. That's huge, obviously, back then. Complete NHLPA rosters, over 500 real players. Accurate player statistics, players modeled in over 14 different categories. More aggressive computer opponent, harder hitting and tougher to beat. Goalies with attitudes. Faster goalies, now diver lunge for tough slap shots. There's player injuries. You can edit your lines, create your own team lines, and save them the battery. New signature moves. Smack a McInnes glass, breaking slap shot a little high, and smash the glass behind the net. Awesome power. Track player statistics. Fall, how many goals you scored with your favorite players throughout the playoffs. Yager, Stevens, Oates, Buer, and more. Hard hitting NHLPA action. Deliver a vicious body check in the corner as your defenseman steal the puck and send it up ice. Uh, radical goalie saves. Barrasso, Hextall, Asenia, Asenia drive for pucks. Lunge for high corner slap shots and make hard skipping skip saves. 